Lassa virus is endemic in West Africa, Guinea, Liberia, Sierra Leone and Nigeria. It's a hemorrhagic fever like Ebola, for example. So many of the symptoms are very similar there with bleeding, swelling. The best guess is probably that tens of thousands of people every year are infected with Lassa and many of these will then end up dying for the infection. In this project, we were really trying to answer some fundamental questions about the virus. So where it came from, how it's spread, uh, how it's evolving and changing, uh, whether it's evolving to be more virulent, um, and then also uh, to, to really zoom in from uh, geographic scales and time scales of hundreds of years to actually more human time scales of how the virus is evolving and changing within a single infected patient. And so we wanted to answer those questions for Lassa and also to see how it, how it compared to Ebola. Our overall goal was to get a sequence catalog of the virus, basically get an idea of what does the virus look like, the genetics of the virus in the different countries, primarily in Nigeria and Sierra Leone. So what the setup is that an infectious patient on patient infected with Lassa fever comes into the hospital and then there they do a local diagnosis and they treat the patient there. And basically what we get is that the blood sample that was used for the diagnosis, we take whatever is left over for that and use that for our studies. And then what we do is we take the sample, it's inactivated so it's completely safe. We ship it back to America here and then we get sequences from those individuals and then we also have about 15 rodents, the rodents that carry the virus, where we have also managed to sequence the virus. So the main findings we show here is that the virus appears to have originated at least a thousand years ago in modern day Nigeria and then maybe a couple of hundred years ago or so has spread across West Africa, so going from Nigeria into the other countries, primarily of Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone. So that's one of the main findings we saw. And then, importantly, I think what we found with that is that the sort of evolution of the virus as it's spreading across countries is maintained in a rodent reservoir. So we know it lives in a rodent mastemus natalensis, and the virus maintains its diversity there. So it seems that Lassa virus is mostly dominated by transmission within the rodents that then uh, occasionally will transmit to humans, and that human-to-human -human transmission, um, although there are some examples, for example, uh, hospital outbreaks of, of Lassa virus uh, that do occur, but it seems to be more the exception than, than the rule. It's different from, for example, Ebola, because Ebola, we have this initial spillover event, but then all subsequent cases are the result of sustained human-to-human -human transmissions. Another uh, major difference that we found between Ebola and Lassa is actually in terms of the genetic diversity of the virus. So Ebola virus tends to be uh, uh, very, very uniform. Within, so within a single infected person, uh, there aren't very many detectable mutations. Uh, and in Lassa, that's mostly the case. So most people, when you sequence Lassa virus from uh, their, their blood sample, uh, you just see one version of the virus. Uh, but there's a few individuals that have a very, very diverse population of viruses within them. So there's lots of mutations and changes. So uh, this tells us that there are at least some people infected with Lassa who might, have, who might be chronic carriers, who have been carrying the virus for longer, giving it more time to, to mutate and change. Uh, however, uh, most of these mutations that happen within a person because they help the virus evade the immune system, uh, then are, are evolutionary dead ends. Um, so where those mutations are not well suited to be transmitted uh, to another person. So it seems like they occur, but then you rarely see them again in, in another person. Uh, I think there's a few uh, relevant findings for, for human health. Uh, one is that we definitely see clusters of Lassa virus genetic diversity depending on geographic region. So this has implications for diagnostics or vaccines that um, they would have to be tailored for the specific country or, or geographic region. We now have these technologies and tools to monitor the virus, look at genetic changes over time and understand how the virus is evolving. And we can then use that for other viruses like Ebola, for example. It's on 
important that we understand over time during an outbreak, how is it changing? Influenza, which keeps spreading across the world, we know how it's changing in real time. HIV and also other pathogens like that. This was a big collaborative project with uh, researchers in Nigeria and Sierra Leone, the US um, and Canada. And um, so there's many different people working on different parts. These viruses like Ebola and Lhasa in general are understudied. And I think it's important for my research to do research that I feel like can make a real difference in people affected by these diseases and also gives me an opportunity to work in a highly collaborative environment that's multinational, work in West Africa and work in the US with really great partners everywhere.